Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will learn about how to make a Pac-Man game using MIT Scratch. So in case you guys don't know about the Pac-Man game, I would encourage you to open Google and type Pac-Man over here to understand how the game looks like and how to play it. So this is the game I'm talking about. Let's click on the play button. So to start with this Pac-Man game, first we have to open MIT Scratch. So I'm just going to type Scratch on Google and this is the first link that you guys have to visit, scratch.mit.edu. Click on it and then you just have to click on the create button which is located on the top left side. And here we are. So let's start with the Pac-Man game. First let's understand how to add characters inside Scratch. On the bottom right side as you can see there's this cat icon. You can click on it and it shows you all the characters which are present inside Scratch by default. But the only problem is that our Pac-Man character is not located over here. So I'm going to click on the back button. Let's go to Google and search Pac-Man PNG. And I'm going to click on images. So you can pick the character that you like. For example, I'm going to go with this one. This looks good. I will right click on this, save image to downloads, and it's done. Now let's go back to scratch and you have to take your mouse on top of it, top of the icon of the cat icon. Just don't click on it. Move your mouse up and you have to select upload sprite. Go to the folder where you downloaded it. For example, I'm just going to search Pac-Man. So as you can see, our character has been added, but this character is coming with a background. So there is a special website which helps you to remove the background of a character. So you have to open Google and type remove BG, open the first link and upload the sprite over here. Um, search Pac-Man. And as you can see, it shows removed background. Let's click on download. Let's add it again in our scratch. Let's remove the old sprite. And as you can see, the new sprite is there without the background. Let's remove this uh, cat. So you have to click on it, click on the bin button, and that's it. So our character has been added. And if you want, you can reduce the size of the character. I'm just going to make it 40. And we can start with the movements now. So to start with the character movements, first you have to click on the control section of Scratch and drag this if block. I'm dragging this if block. Next, I'm moving to the sensing and picking this key space pressed block. So now this block allows me to choose between different keys. If I click on it, let's say I'm selecting the right arrow. If key right arrow is pressed, this is how the condition looks like so far. Let's understand what to place inside this if block to make the movement. So I'm going to open a screenshot and annotate it for you. So you understand the movements a little better. So right now our character is standing right over here. If you want your character to move towards the right hand side, as you can see, the numbers are increasing. So there is this one, two, three, four, five. There's a simple number line and minus one, two, three, four, five. This is our X axis. And similarly, if you want your character to go up, there is a Y axis. So it's one, two, three, four, five for up. And if you want your character to come down, you just have to reduce the Y axis of the character. So very simple rule. Let me just conclude it for you. If you want your character to go left or right, it's going to be the X axis. And if you want your character to go up or down, it's going to be the Y axis. Now let's just see if there's any block in the motion section which can help us. So if you take a closer look, there is this change x by 10. I'm placing this block over here and it's done. Now we just have to put a forever block on it. So this code runs all the time and event green flag. So the reason we are adding this event that this code should only activate when we click on this green flag. I've clicked on the green flag. As you can see, the code is glowing. Now, if I press the right arrow of my keyboard, the character starts to move towards the right hand side. 
Similarly, let's make the code for the left hand side. Again, I'm going to add the if block, sensing, adding another key, left arrow, and then a forever green flag, and the opposite of this, change x by minus 10. So change x by minus 10. Let's click on the green flag again. Let's press the left arrow and it's working. Just like this, you have to try to make the code for up arrow and down arrow. You can pause the video and try it for yourself. So I hope you have tried making the code for up arrow and down arrow. In case you're struggling with it, I'll just show you how it's done. So again, we will be using the same blocks. So I'm just going to right click on one of these blocks and duplicate it. So it's a little faster. I will change the left arrow to up arrow and instead of X axis, you have to put Y axis over here. Change Y by 10. As I told you, when you want the character to go up, it's going to be, it's going to be an uh, increase in the Y axis. And when you want your character to go down, it's going to be a decrease in the Y axis. Let's just see. I'm going to duplicate this block as well. Change it to down arrow and change y by minus 10. Let's click on the green flag. Let's try up arrow first, then down arrow, left arrow and right arrow. So our movement code is done. So now let's add the background in our Pac-Man game. For this, I'm, I will again go to the Google images and I will be typing Pac-Man maze. So now there are a few rules before you select any of the Pac-Man maze. For example, you should not select this sprite because the color is not consistent. As you can see, it's dull somewhere and it's like glowing on the left hand side. So this is something that you don't have to select. Again, you don't have to select this one as well because there are already characters present inside it. So same goes with this. So this looks like a good image i will be adding this in the description box in case you want to use the same sprites and the same background again i'm going to save this in my computer i will go back to scratch and this time you have to hover your mouse over this section choose a backdrop click on upload so now our background has been added but there are few inconsistencies for example it's leaving some area on the right hand side. So to fix this, you have to click on the selection tool, which is there inside Scratch. Start from the top left side, click and hold your mouse and select it all the way to the bottom right side. So as you can see, the selections have been made. You will see these little dots, click and drag, expand your backdrop. And that's it, it's ready. Now let's reduce the size of the Pac-Man even further. I'm just going to make it five in yeah. So let's test our character movements, pressing the right arrow, pressing the left arrow. So yes, I can move the character, but there's one problem that this character is phasing through the lines. So now we have to make an if condition so that it doesn't go through these lines. Let's see how we can do this. And we should also decrease the number of steps because every time I press the right arrow, it moves way too much. So first I'm going to reduce the number of steps everywhere. Make it minus five or even smaller than this. It's up to you. So five, five and minus five. That's it. Now let's test it again. If I press the right arrow, it's taking smaller steps. Now we have to make this code that if the character is touching the blue line, then it should not face through it. Now, let's see how to make this one. For this, you have to again go to your control section. I'm going to drag another if block over here and I'm placing this right below the right arrow code. Now, again, let's go to sensing. And this time I'm going to pick the touching color block. I've dragged it over here. You can click on the color, click on the eyedropper, pick the color. So I've picked this blue color. And that is the reason I didn't recommend it any of the other backgrounds because we want the color to be consistent. So it shows if touching blue color. Now what to do? If I'm pressing the right arrow and I hit the line, I just have to make the opposite force for it. For example, if it's change X by five and I don't want my character to move, 
I want this blue color to apply opposite force on my character. Let's see. So change x by minus 5. So if my character is moving towards the right hand side and it hits the wall, the wall is going to apply negative 5 force on the character and the character will not go through the wall. So I have to do the same for the left arrow. Again, I'm adding the if block. Going to the sensing section, adding the touching color. Let's pick the color again. And this time you have to add the opposite of left arrow. So it's change x by minus 5 right now. And the opposite is going to be just change x by 5. So it cancels out. Let's click on the left arrow and test. And yeah, my character is not going through the lines. So now you can pause the video and try the code for up arrow and down arrow on your own. So now let's complete this code for the up arrow and the down arrow as well. I'm going to right click on this. Place it here and I have to just write the opposite code. Instead of change y by 5, it's going to be change y by minus 5. And for the down arrow, the opposite force is going to be change y by 5. And this is how the complete code looks like for the movements. Now, if I press the up arrow, I cannot go through this wall. I press down arrow, I cannot go through this wall. Same goes with the right arrow and the left arrow. Now, let's just see how to add that Pac-Man food, which Pac-Man collects while moving in the game. For this, I'm clicking on the sprite section and I'm picking this yellow ball, which is available inside Scratch. I'm going to reduce the size, make it, okay, 10 is too small, let's try 20. This is good. So I'm going to place this ball, let's say here on the screen. And now we have to write down the code that if the Pac-Man collects this ball, the ball should hide, simple as that. So again, it's another if condition that we will be using. If from sensing, I'm picking the first block this time. It shows touching mouse pointer. You can click on it and select your Pac-Man. And in case you don't like this, it's a very long name. You can just go back and rename it from here. Just write Pac-Man and it's done. So if you see, it shows this code is on the ball. So guys, please take care of this. Don't write this code on the Pac-Man. So if touching Pac-Man, what do we want? We want the ball to hide. So I am going to the look section and adding the hide block over here. And again, a forever and a green flag on top of it. Let's test this code. So I'm pressing the up arrow, moving, pressing the right arrow, moving in my game. And I collected the ball and it hides as you can see. But now the ball is gone. If I click on the green flag, I stop the game. It's not coming back. So let's make the code that when we restart the game, when we click on the green flag again, the ball should come back. So when green flag clicked, show. And that's it. I will click on it. And as you can see, I will click on it again and it's visible. So now let's add multiple copies of these balls. You can right click on it, duplicate. And don't worry, you don't have to code it again. It will duplicate with the code in it. And now if I click on the green flag, as you can see, there are multiple balls. You just have to arrange them. And test it. You can click on right. Uh, first, you can press the right arrow, move up. And it's done. So it's working for all the Pac-Man balls. And now let's add the ghosts in our Pac-Man game. So again, let's go to Google. Let's type Pac-Man ghosts. You can pick the one that you like. I'm going to choose this blue one. And as you can see, there is this white background. So I'm going to save it. Take it to my remove.bg. So now the background is gone. Let's upload this as a sprite inside Scratch. I'm going to reduce the size and fit the ghost inside this box. 
so let's try 10 still too much 6 okay so this is where the ghost starts from to code this that the ghost starts from here you have to click on the green flag and from your motion section select go to minus 3 y20 and please make sure you only drag this block once the ghost is inside this box now i'm going to first move the ghost up then add a glide block over here and you have to use this glide block which contains x and y so now let's click on the green flag as you can see the ghost goes up now what this code basically means it says first go to minus 320 in the graph which is this position then glide all the way up to minus 2 to 51 just like this i'm going to code it further i'll make the ghost go right add another glide block make it go down probably till here add another glide block take a left turn add another glide block and let's see how it looks like so far it goes up takes a right turn takes a left turn and stops just like this you can code it further for example if you want your ghost to come down after this take a left turn and move around in the maze you can do that let's add one more set of code that if the pac-man touches the ghost the game should stop so i'm adding this code in the ghost only again if from the sensing block picking the first if touching pac-man like if the ghost touches the pac-man in the control section you will find a stop all button you just have to drag it here and it's done so now let's click on the green flag let's see and the ghost touches it game stops so if you click on the green flag again the game restarts you can start collecting dodge the ghost and that's it just like this you can add two three more ghosts in the game obviously different colored like for example you can pick this code them in different directions like it can move from this direction to this direction and that's it your game is done